to get faithful people more than it is to get gold in fact when you place faithful people on the right and you place gold on that you can easily get gold rather than faithful people that's what the bible is trying to say so he says that a faithful man who can find so the question i want to ask you this morning is that a faithful kingdom servant because he says that there are certain things paul is talking to timothy and he tells him that there are certain that you can tell everybody you have to look for people who are faithful before you can communicate those deep truths unto them so there are certain things that we cannot share because you are not yet faithful so god must test your faithfulness before he can give you certain truths that is why even as a man but i have noticed that everywhere i go and preach my message is different based on the faithfulness level and this morning's message is not a message to make anybody feel bad it's a charge it's a holy charge so that you walk out of this building and become a faithful kingdom servant because one of the things i want to tell you is that you cannot work or operate kingdom service if you are not faithful whether it is singing whether it is keyboard whether it is preaching whether it is cleaning church you see if you are going to enjoy the rewards of kingdom service then you must understand the language of faithfulness god is not looking for anointed people the first requirement into leadership is not your anointing god is not looking for people who can prophesy go to first corinthians chapter 4 verse 2 how many of you understand that you are a steward do you understand a steward a steward is simply someone who is a keeper of something he is managing whatever has been given to him and every kingdom service every christian is a steward all the money god gave you you are a steward of the money so if you are not even faithful with your tithe you are trying to give god a message these people that are here are not my church members are you getting me you are not my church members you are god's sheep i'm only a steward and i'm going to give account about how i manage it that is why i have the sole authority to protect the sheep if i see that there is a wolf coming i have the right to protect them are you getting me yeah so sometimes we may end up sacking people from church just because we want to protect the sheep because when you read the bible very carefully there's jesus in talking to the disciples in matthew chapter 7 he says on that day many will be called sheep and many will be called goats so it means in the kingdom in the church there are people who have sheep characteristics and people who have good tendencies as your neighbor which one are you you see you will never see a goat walking alone a goat likes to scatter things if you are the part who creates division in church you are a goat a sheep is humble listen today it, nobody should say reverend you are talking against me talking about me talking to me everybody is hearing the message are you getting me yeah so i'm talking about you can even title it kingdom faithfulness he has promised he will never fail i will honor him have you seen it first corinthians chapter 4 verse 2 he will never that is a part i'm looking it's forever more this now god's faithfulness is forever more but your faithfulness is limited is it unlimited or it is limited 
there are there are there are there are things that when they are manufactured the company writes on it ltd that is it is limited i remember those days when they were nike they write nike unlimited that is that the guy who has the latest nike he is not the only one who ever it it means one year later i can still buy that but when it is limited it means it is specified to a particular group of numbers god's faithfulness is unlimited but man's faithfulness is limited that is why it is difficult to find faithful men. and when you use faithful men women are not uh, excluded anytime you see the bible use man is not talking about the the male homo sapien he's using that to describe the nature i get to me he's, tra- he's trying to describe the function of the person so now he says in first corinthians chapter 4 verse 2 moreover say moreover it is required in stewards that man be found faithful in other words before you select anybody to become a leader in anything concerning kingdom service the first requirement is that you must be faithful so i want you to test your faithfulness capacity put a thermometer faithfulness thermometer in your armpit and start testing your faithfulness because god cannot commit anything into your hands when you are not faithful and faithfulness is not determined by your pastor because i don't know what you do in secret or what about me in secret that is why in the same church others are blessed more than others because some in their heart are not faithful but with appearance they are faithful i can say you are faithful but in the sight of god you are not faithful because based on what he has given you and what you are producing is someone in church when god looks at what he has given you and what you are doing it does not match because you can come and stand here every end of the month you can pay isn't it some of you don't even pay tight we understand kingdom faithfulness god is waiting for you now maybe you earn nine thousand or you earn and you come and put 50 cities in the envelope and come and stand there every end of the month the whole church says that as for this guy he is a faithful tighter but in the sight of god you are not faithful because faithfulness is not seen by man and faithfulness is a spirit it's called the spirit of faithfulness not everybody has that spirit so it's difficult to find people who are genuinely faithful what is faithfulness it means to be unmovable it means to be steadfast it means to remain constant first corinthians chapter 15 verse 58 and as i'm preaching this message nobody should feel bad accept the message one of the signs that you are a son is when you can be rebuked and you are still happy when rebuke and correction becomes an error in your sight it means you have moved away from being a son or daughter you are now a church member (laughs) today i pray god to give us grace to handle the message therefore my beloved brethren be ye steadfast he is describing to us what it means to be faithful So to be faithful means to be what? Steadfast. To be unmovable. So it means that when we take Pastor Kingsley after 10 years, his nature, his mood, his talk, his way of thinking about the church, about the man of God, about God, should be the same. Every equation you are solving, there is a constant and there is a variable. The constant does not change. That is why they say giving x is equal to 5. Find y. y is a variable. pi is a constant. The value of pi is constant. 
anywhere you see pi in any given situation, it is what? 22 over 22 over 7, which is what? 3.1421 <laughs> are you getting me so pi is a constant i want to ask you this question is your faithfulness a constant or is a variable there are some of you the day you will hit that breakthrough this will not be your church you are waiting to go and testify in a big church. See, sometimes when you see me related to certain people, it's not because of their money. But the way they've been able to humble themselves over the years, I have they've transitioned from level of glory to another level of glory. You see ASP sitting down there, you know, from the time we knew him, he has been advancing over and over again, and he's still the same. He, he has never, never has he come to me and then he will talk to me anyhow. Despite whatever. But some of you, just because of 5,000 you have seen with your life, now you are finding fault with the man of God. Or just because a boy or a girl has expressed interest in you, that gives you the guarantee and the warranty to now pick errors in the areas of your leaders. So, your faithfulness is not only a variable. Your faithfulness is like a wind. And a wind can never be stable. Wind will all be blown away. Is someone in church? You see people. Yes, how many years so far have you been in the church? Three to four years. No, it's four years now. I think 2016 May 2016 after Easter because I remember it was Easter Sunday your wife came it's been four years and this has been a church they've been coming to if he wants to travel he will tell me that he wants to travel if he goes he will alert me that he has if he comes back to Ghana he will send me a message or call me that he's been back four years we have never quarreled before he has never gotten angry at me before there are days the messages i preach definitely it affects him there is nobody in this church i'll ever preach that the message will not affect you because the word of god is not selective are you getting me god does not do favoritism in this church everybody will get a dose so but in all this he's been constant he moved from deep rankings to whatever he's still the same you you've not even moved in rank you've not even moved in position all you moved in is age and years and that even age and years when we even multiply it by three you don't qualify to certain degrees that people have attained but yes still your faith is even not not only is it questionable but it can be predicted that this guy this is what is going to happen and you are expecting God as we are declaring that anybody that engages in kingdom service this is what will happen to him God is not a fool he that cast you see the Bible says Jesus said I don't cast my pearls before swine you see, a swine is something that does not appreciate that which has been given to him. No matter how well you bath pig, it will find its place in the mud. A pig does not know cleanliness. So there are certain people, no matter the message you preach, they have made up their mind that they, they will never be faithful. And not only will, not, will they not be faithful, they will also try to influence others not to be faithful preaching what i say to one i say to all it's not only to one person everybody here you are included when you're coming to church is questionable your faithfulness is questionable <laughs> when your tithing is questionable your faithfulness is quite let me very let me be very plain and frank with you 
your church is having service you won't come your church is doing convention you won't come and yet still you call yourself a member no i want to ask you a question i want to ask you a question how many of you believe you are all the body of christ now if you are the body of christ let me take your physical body can your leg go anywhere that your hand will not follow how come you say you are a member of the this court filler and we are going some we are doing something you are not part the whole church is quiet there are four types of commitment there is conditional commitment say conditional there is a fair weather commitment when the weather is fair i'll come when there is money in my pocket i'll come <laughs> let me just leave it at number three the highest one is marital commitment where someone is maritally committed to the cause of christ to the cause of the church and himself this church whether i live or die this is my church but some of you cannot be said you are conditional church members you are waiting for something to happen then you take a bow there are some people who cannot even be uh we'll get there we'll get there tell your neighbor get ready just prepare yourself people will live your life people will leave the church people leaving the church does not mean the church is false the the number of people that leave a ministry that not determine whether the church is genuine or not john chapter 6 verse 66 jesus started after fasting and prayers and he came in matthew chapter 5 great multitude follow him remember he fed five thousand john six 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 five thousand people reduce now look at it he chose 70 disciples after the 70 disciples jesus started preaching certain messages the disciples said this guy i don't trust him again 66 please 666 that is the danger of john chapter 6 just like it is for mark of the beast sisters this is the sisters of ministry this is the sisters of ministry every ministry no matter what you do you will pass through sisters if you don't pass through sisters you will go and collect the other sisters in revelation which is the mark of the beast it is a test of ministry <laughs> from that time many how many not few many of the disciples went back and walked no more with him because of what jesus started preaching he said i am the bread of life then many of the disciples so a time will come that many of you will be tempted to go and you know what the door is of front the way is of front <laughs> because i will not allow you to push me to preach things that are not from god and i will not also pamper you into hell it cannot be my story i will not be a signboard and not lead people into the destiny that god has called them to so if there are areas that you need rebuke i'll rebuke you if you get angry and you walk out i don't care john chapter 6 go to the next verse Jesus said unto the twelve, Will you also go away? Listen, 70 disciples. It was left with only 12. Now, you have preached a message. You have said something that the people are not happy about. And many people have left. Instead of doing, uh, what's the name of that thing? No, that thing that they do, they say they send people to do damage control to maintain the twelve. You now come and preach another message. And now tell them, Will you also go away? Next verse. Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. <laughs> Next verse. <laughs> Jesus, you have lost 12. How many? 58. 58. 
28 people have just left your ministry and is left with 12 and the 12 people that you have come to church instead of preaching it will be well the ministry will grow stay in the ministry you are now coming to preach another harder message <laughs> verse 70 look at look at look at the, the storyline of jesus jesus answered them have i not chosen listen the 12 that is left jesus is now saying one of you is a devil after the 70 have left and it's left with 12 you are not saying one of the people that is left is a devil he has to test their faith god will never choose anybody who will never be faithful god when you see someone walking in a certain dimension of anointing is because he has been faithful to god if you see somebody operating in a gift that is unusual to you you should understand that this guy has been faithful in a certain area and anytime you fight against that person you are fighting against the faithfulness of god when you see somebody driving a car genuinely blessed you should know that this person has done something that shows that god has been faithful hallelujah when you see someone carrying a prophetic mantle you can fast 100 days if you don't commit to the same level of faithfulness he committed i bet you you'll never have it are you here have i not chosen you 12 even after preaching that at least you uh, 58 have left you do damage control and say you 12 that have left let us be ministry together rather you come and say disciples meeting say all disciples meet me after church i've noticed that some people have gone now i want to ask all of you here are you also going some of you here are devils you have to go disciples we have a meeting after church you see their faces have even changed <laughs> 500 people so just when he was ascending to heaven 500 people say 500 on the day of pentecost how many people were there 120 the 380 the 500 were the people who received the promise jesus said go go and tarry in jerusalem and be endued with power by the time the holy ghost came in Acts chapter 2 it was left with 120 faithful men who can find so it is not the number of people that leave listen 380 people left Jesus ministry. Imagine this church is 500. And then following Sunday, we come to church and only 120 people are there. The other 120 will be like, oh, it looks like a lot of people have left. Then this pastor, he's doing something wrong. To you, your judgment of a good ministry is a lot of people are in the church. But when you look at the story of Jesus, the judgment of a good ministry is that a lot of people will go. You, your life you have too many friends who told you all those friends and your contacts are faithful people they are just waiting for a bad story of you and you will see what they will do to you to, you go home take your phone pray stop talk let the holy spirit direct you anybody who is you feel this person must not know my life delete the person Every month you should do uh, servicing service your life take out all those people who are not needed from your life there are people you must block and delete there are people on Facebook you must unfriend you must go through your con anybody who does not share any uh, sensitive on Facebook Listen. we don't have time to waste faithful man who can find maybe i should just end the message here because this is just the introduction if i enter the message you not feel comfortable but already you are not feeling comfortable we, we are in a generation where people are no longer faithful yeah. people are oh, oh, what is that let if using one oh, 
who, who is being used to stop my sound? Which of you is that? Change, change this thing fast. Because I can give, give me this one. Hallelujah. Oh, this one too is giving problems. And then they are mobile. Are you here? You need to walk in faithfulness if you must see the kingdom service blessing. All the service blessing I've been talking about that when you serve God, He will bless you, He will bless your bread, He will do this. It only comes by faithfulness. You cannot assess the blessing of God if you are not faithful to His kingdom, to His work, and to His servants. Are you here? You are all quiet on me. Listen. If I'm even preaching and you're not paying attention, it's a sign that you're not faithful. When I'm preaching, you should be smiling or writing down notes and be nodding your head in response to show that what I'm saying is sinking down. And you should be clapping. The days when we come to church, we are not minding me, I'm also not minding you, it's over. Now when you say it, I will say your name in the preaching sleep here and you see what I'll do to you. <laughs> Facebook people are watching. Everybody will hear your name. And it will be there on record. 20 years later, it will be on Facebook. Everybody will hear your name. Make a mistake. Hallelujah. Clap your hands to Jesus. Now, there are days we come to church and we receive encouraging words. There are days we come to church and the man of God praises us. But there are days too that the man of God must rebuke you. If you are in a church and your pastor has never rebuked you before, I bet you your pastor doesn't love you. Your pastor has never called your name aside and said, You come and stand here. One on one say, Who what you are doing? This and this and this. You have been very stupid, you have been very and you have, you have never received rebuke before. It's not a sign of love. God says, Whoever I love, I rebuke. Show me your love and I'll show you your rebuke. Can I preach? You can ask any husband here. Whether when they genuinely love their wives, they'll be sitting down, they feel their wives are doing the wrong thing and they will not say it. Why do you think there is quarrel in marriage? You think marriage is all about pampering? Because one party feels you are doing something that is not right and they will say it. If you don't say it, it's a sign that you don't love your partner. Yes, is that not the case? Now, the question I want to ask you will you be part of the few that are faithful, or you'll be part of the many that will be deceived and go? Every ministry that starts at a point, many people will leave because not many people are faithful. That's why he says, A faithful person who can find most of you sitting here are not faithful. You look at my face, but you are not faithful. You smile at me, but you are not faithful. Faithfulness is not you smiling at the man of God. Listen, that's why I said that Jesus, after all this, he now came to preach another message. Uh A true man of God is not interested in numbers. He's interested in growing a people to heaven. So if my preaching will cause you to leave the church because I'm interested in taking a group of people to heaven. I'm not interested in making a name. So my assignment is to teach you what to do. So if my teaching you what to do will make you angry. So be it. The way is your front. You can go. There are so many churches around. You can join. I can if you, I can come and see me. I will give you a good church to go. Enough of the stupidity and foolishness. There must come a time where you must grow up and understand that you cannot be in the church and behave anyhow and talk anyhow and expect the man of God to be quiet over your foolishness and expect your foolishness to saturate other members. No! That's is it over. That nonsense must stop. Nobody is afraid of anybody here. Nobody gave birth to anybody here. Nobody provides food for anybody here. 
You eat your own food. Don't you eat your own food? Can I preach? Now let's start the message. Um, unfaithfulness. Church members who are unfaithful, eh? They are like a, a broken tooth. Proverbs chapter 25, verse 19. Eh, when you are going to start your business, what I'm preaching is not only for church, it's for business. When you are going to do business and you don't get faithful people to handle your business, eh, it's like a broken tooth. Woe betides you if you start a taxi business and you don't get a correct one. It's, it's more than running stomach in a rainy day. Confidence in an unfaithful man in time of trouble is like a broken tooth and a foot out of joint. Those people, when you need them the most, that is when they will give you up. There are people who lie about the man of God, who lie about the church, who lie about everything you say, they will twist it and mean what you have not said. Is someone in church? The way some people are looking at me, I'm, I'm, what, what, what is happening? What? We, are, we, are, we are in a generation where the youth of today we feel we cannot be rebuked and that anybody that rebukes us hates us no your father should be able to rebuke you the spirit will not be poured upon servants it will be poured upon sons and daughters Joel chapter 2 verse 25 he says I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and daughters the spirit will be poured on all flesh but it is only sons and daughters that can prophesy so if you are not a son or a daughter you will never be able to stand in the capacity of a prophet and one of the things that makes somebody your father is the ability to rebuke you and you still accept that rebuke as love and not as hatred you should be able to walk to your pastor and say reverend please look at my life is there any foolish thing i'm doing tell me Nowadays, when you've been, we can't even advise you on who to marry. Anybody who has married before or he, he who is married can advise you on marriage. Even if it is for 10 days, they can tell you that listen, this thing, eh, this thing you are doing, this thing it won't work. It's not a curse. They can see something you don't see. They are they are at a place where you are not yet. It is humility for you to accept their counsel. Can, can I preach? Let me feel comfortable in the church. If I don't feel comfortable in the church, then it means that you are denying me the ability to preach the message God has called me to preach. And you are unfaithful. Today, the faith, Facebook people will look at me some way because this is not how they know me. <laughs> They've never heard me talk like this before. Facebook family, I'm sorry. Eh? I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and daughters they shall do what they shall prophesy sons and daughters will prophesy but the spirit of god will be poured upon all flesh are you a son are you a daughter one of the things that shows that you're a son proverbs chapter 12 verse 1 this is my listen don't say don't ever come to and say this is my spiritual father don't ever point that this is reverend mark my spiritual father I'm only your pastor because I can't rebuke you. Whoso loveth instruction, whoso loveth instruction, Twaso. Is it now? Is it JM Twaso or Akufado Twaso? Akufado Twaso. Whoso loveth instruction, can we instruct you? But he that hated reproof is brutish. King James has made it a, a bit English. They are ochiri. <laughs> say it in three. They are ochiri de. Atentiem, atenteno. Kosia, oya kosia. One of the signs that you are full. Listen, the Bible says there were ten virgins. Five were wise, five were foolish. Mostly, what we are preaching, we say the foolish virgins are those who don't weasels. 
But what you also don't know is that anybody who hates instruction is also a foolish virgin. You are in the church, but you hate instruction. When the preaching is going on like this, you are saying that it's because of me that is preaching that way. Who told you? Are you the one who determines my secret prayers? When I'm praying, are you the one who comes to give me the message to preach? So, I don't have anything better in life to do than to wake up in the morning, look at you, and form a message around you, and come and preach about you, and leave all the, all the other people and preach only about you. Why? What, what, what is so special about you? No. If the message is going on and you can see that it is, it is worrying you at a point, accept the sword. Let the sword pierce you so that it can bring out the diseases. have paracetamol is if they give you if they go to the hospital they give you medicine that is a pain uh, bitter you say the doctor doesn't like that's why he gave me a bitter medicine are you normal no he wants your well-being it will even be part of his records that this person was sick and he came to my hospital and i gave him medicine so it will increase his credential it will be part of his reputation and his records so if you become a better church member, ah, it will be part of my record that that man, Reverend Mark, he can transform even the metallic sinner to become the softest Christian. So why, why, why will I preach about you? <laughs> it is stupid to hate correction. It is stupid to hate correction. We can't correct you. I, I, I'm, I, you don't know that me too I'm, I'm, I've been corrected or I'm always corrected or you don't know that my wife has somebody she can report me to you think I'm the final authority oh you have no idea let me play the fool right now they will call, they, she will call somebody and the next moment I'll be going for a meeting <laughs> she knows who to call Me too, I know who to call. <laughs> we all know who to call. <laughs> you, there is nobody that can come and say, Bismarck, I think the way you have dressed is not nice. If we tell you I'm not dressed nice, it means you hate you. It means you have been embarrassed. If you come, you've done something that is not right. You say, the way this guy, the way you are, you are looking, I think it, it does not project Christ for Eh, why are you talking against me like that? You are not a son. You are a goat. You are not a son. You are a goat. Yeah, you are a goat. It's true. A sheep will hear the voice of the shepherd. It just tells me that you are not called to this church. And if all of you will leave because of this message, the way is your front. You can go. If everybody, all the disciples say, Reverend, today's message, you, you, honestly, what you said, I'm not happy. You see me again. You will see to my face. But the next thing we we'll realize, you'll be giving example, you'll be giving excuses. You should be rebuked. Rebuke is a sin. Listen, if every day your father is pampering you, there's something wrong with you. It means your father is tired of your, your, your face. Every day, Sholanda, you are doing a great work. Sholanda, you sang better today. Sholanda, you, you played keyboard well. Sholanda, if you don't say Sholanda, you did it. It means that Sholanda, you are not doing ministry. There should be a moment where you say Sholanda. Today, the singing, it didn't go well. You didn't sing cor correctly. What happened? And Sholanda should not get angry. Why would Reverend say that I didn't sing correctly? Who else should tell you you didn't sing correctly? Is it your boyfriend or your girlfriend? Who, who wants to pamper you so be like, <laughs> when you be, listen, one thing about lovers is that even if your thing is not nice, they'll tell you it's nice. The church is quiet. It's true. Faithful people will not allow others to deceive them. You, you know me. You have interacted with me. You know Reverend Mark yourself. It's not like, it's not you don't see me on TV. And someone comes to say something about Reverend Mark and you believe what the person is saying about Reverend Mark. And because of that, you also leave the church. You are not, 
you are not you, you are not even a sheep you brother the, the s we didn't even start spelling it you don't know me because if you've really related to me some of the things people will even say about you should let you know that this thing this person says is a lie what is your personal encounter see that is why all of you need personal encounters i will keep on saying that all of you every church member it is a rule go and pray to god and let god speak to you about the man of god you are following if he's forced god speak to me about reverend mark if he's forced reveal me today but if he's genuine i bet you give him all your life and your heart go and ask god today i'm serious go and ask him don't lie about don't don't don't, don't uh, 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 reverend this one go and ask him because it is your encounter that will create your conviction if i have seen a white handkerchief before and someone comes to tell me there is no white handkerchief ah someone comes to tell you that reverend mark extorts money from there and you also believe meanwhile since you joined this church never have i used prophecy to extort money from anybody then you need to you, foolishly you you leave the church He starts spreading. Oh, this man of God, he uses prophecy to extort money from people. When money is my weakness in this church, how to even collect money from people is a problem. Till so now. When was the last time I ever prophesied to somebody and he said, give money? So if you allow, take me to Acts chapter 14. Let me show you something. I'm going to show you the spirit of Absalom. There are people who join ministries. You see, all these things I'm saying, eh, take it very seriously because you join a company. And in that company, it's not everybody who loves the company. And they will say evil things about the company. But you don't move by what they say. Move by what God is telling you. You can also ask God. Ask God. What is the truth of this matter? Everybody around me knows that once you tell me something, the next thing is a meeting. If you come and tell me that, oh, our brother so so and so, he sold uh, uh, what is the Kadij, is it Kadijan? What, what is it? Pullover. Hoodie to you. And he deceived you. You won't go. You will stand there. Osha, call our brother for me. There and there, we'll ask him. This brother says you sold hoodie to him. We'll ask because I cannot use one report to judge a man when I have not heard his report so how can you allow somebody's thing he's saying about me you have not heard my shadow they say it is true that you too sheepishly foolishly stupidly you walk out of a ministry are you normal and you think you know sometimes it amazes me that some people think they are walking out of a ministry is going to affect the ministry let me tell you this let me tell you this not even me walking out of this church can affect this ministry there is no ministry that is built by god that can be destroyed by man it is impossible unless we don't serve a living god ah what are you saying paul said we can do nothing against the truth but for the truth this ministry there were moments where we thought that it was over there were moments I, I, if, if i tell you that you know what i mean some of you have not seen anything we used to pray in a chop bar we were only 20 30 no, maybe 31st or december watch now we we're 30. we thought that was that was a good number we started praying 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 one day friday even we were praying and they came to suck us it was men's fellowship only men that time when we were praying we remove our shirt but now we can't remove our shirt because certain brothers carry forest anyway <laughs> when they sat us we were meeting by the roadside let me tell you something this ministry did not start with a group it started with one person for, for four good weeks the only church member in the church was me and i was the only preacher 
you understand that statement? I was preach I was a preacher and I was a receiver. And I was a member. I'll come opening prayer. Then after that, I'll do praise and worship. Then I have some wooden basket. I said, let's take our offering. Then I'll go and stand there, take out my offering and put it inside. And continue. I remove my coat and say, today we are come to preach. Then I'll preach. One time I was having service all alone. The guy by my side used to operate DSTV. Then he came to knock. He was knocking. And I was screaming. So he thought there was a group of people inside. So he put his head inside. When he put his head inside, he didn't see anybody there. He put his whole body inside. He said, please, can I see you? I said, we are having service. Then he turned. <laughs> How can something that did not start with you end with you? No, does it make sense to you? Something that did not start with you, you'll be the one to end it. Are you normal? So now, do you know what I do with accusations? I just leave it to God. Because if you're a man of God, one of the signs that you are hitting the kingdom of darkness is when you start hearing accusations that do not make sense. I told somebody we are in a season of accusations. They thought I was joking. Then it, it started with me, then it hit another person at work. I said, Aha, welcome. You started hearing it. Most of you are going to hear wild accusations about your life. You are hearing your own. Some of you hear Pinocchio, they'll come and tell you you've impregnated a woman. <laughs> a woman you've never seen before. <laughs> Accept the pregnancy. <laughs> oh my God. Life, life, life eh? if you follow life you get heart attack <clears throat> let me show you the spirit of Absalom go to Acts chapter 14 look at something that happens Paul went to preach somewhere after preaching some Jews who hated Paul persuaded people to stone Paul anytime someone is persuading you to stone a man of God you are operating with the spirit of Absalom. Do you know why? I can come and tell this brother. Come. I will meet him on the way. Charlie, what's up? Charlie, me, I'm not going to go to that church again. Hey, the thing Reverend Mark do for there. Hey, you, I mean, you know, come church last week. That's why. He talk about yourself. He say you, the Jesus, you the way. No? He be demon. So, you know what? Me, I show. Make you two show. You catch. Then he will stop. You think you are fighting the church. But what you don't know is that you are fighting yourself. Nobody has fought God and won. That is why we don't fight men of God. Leave them. But we know in this country where a man of God went on TV, spoke against whatever that they are for. Where are they? They are still there. Has their ministry stopped? Has their ministry stopped? They are still there. They are still operating nicely. So it is not what you say that determines the final output of a man. You did not create any man, so you don't have the audacity to bring them down. Look at the spirit of Absalom. And it came to pass. Verse 19, please. They tried to kill Paul. Pinocchio, they will, they will bring stones and say, collect one stone. Let's use to hit Reverend Mark. When you are in your home and someone comes to speak to you about the man of God negatively, he's giving you a stone. Use that same stone to hit them. Anytime you talk against God, against his servant, against his church, you are stoning the man of God. And there came thither certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium. Who did what? What did they do? They persuaded the people to do what? And having stoned Paul, drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. They thought Paul was dead. You see, you can't kill who God is keeping alive. 
faithful men. I'm, the title of the message is simple. Faithful men. A faithful man will not take a stone and be hitting his father. Whether in private. Listen. Do you know that you can actually kill the image of a man of God by your words? You are in a church. Instead of projecting the image of the man of God in a right way, you are rather stoning the man of God. Some of you, if you walk into your house right now, the people in your house will be surprised that I am the one you are talking about. <laughs> Let me preach this message that will change your mindset. Talking about, listen, if a man of God has committed an offense that is punishable by law, let the law deal with them. If a man of God has done something that is punishable by God, let God deal with him. My policy is, if what he has done is legal, let it, let it be done legally. Because there are legal things, you see, if, the, if you go and steal money right now, that one, anointing does not cover. Are you getting me? You, you, you can cover me as a man of God, but the law will not cover me. You can only pray for me and still stand with me. But then, the law will deal with me. Minimum number of years is how many years? Maybe I go and steal a goat. There are people who are suffering eight years. The kufa will be like ten years. Yeah. So if I come, I steal Pastor Kingsley's money. I steal Lady Martinez's money. I steal Bismarck's money. I steal Ophelia's money. I steal Esther's money. I steal all of your money. And I steal Nanette's money. And I tell you that there is some investment somewhere, blah, 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 blah. And I use my influence as a man of God. And I steal that money. No. That one, you, you, you still trust me as a man of God. But this is an illegal issue. There is a court you can take me to. And there is a heavenly court you can take a man of God to. If you feel the man of God has offended you, take him to God. But if you feel what he has done to you can be corrected by man, take him to man. Someone in church. So if you are here, I've stolen your money. ESP is there. Go and report me to him. It's called what? How do you say that one? Swindling people. It, how do you say it? Deception. Deception. I have used prophecy to deceive you. Come and see him. He will choose you there. He will advise you on the best way to choose. Sometimes you even wonder whether people are suffering from schizophrenia. A lot of people are mad though. Only if you are naked. Sometimes the, 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 the accusations people can just level at a man of God. It will shock you. I don't want to even say some of them. They stoned him. It's the spirit of Absalom. Let me just... In 2 Samuel chapter 15, verse 2 to 6, Absalom went to gather people to fight his father. Everybody in this church, if you have even sat in this church for one day and I've preached to you, you have to be careful how you talk. There is no way, there is no way under this sun you will push me to speak evil against Bishop Dag or against Bishop Hamish. It will never be possible. You can show me videos of whatever they've done, I don't care. Is between here and his God. <laughs> the whole church is quiet. Look at it. And Absalom rose up early and stood beside the way of the gate. Now, Absalom is angry because David did not do anything to his half brother that raped his sister. Then he went to stand in the gate. After almost 40 years, he went to stand in the way of the gate. That anybody that was coming, that was coming to see the king, Absalom will persuade them and give them something nice. 
if you are a faithful person a faithful man you will not allow the persuasive words the sweet talks of people to make you fight against your father unless you are saying i'm not your father unless you are saying i'm not your pastor and if i'm not your pastor you don't have the right to be here you have every right to choose any church you want it's your free it's your right it's your right there are a lot of churches here i can even give you examples yeah so many nice churches we have people today listen you see someone walk to you and say reverend people are saying that people are saying that show me the people you are not showing me you are telling me people are saying it is you that is saying it is you a lot of people are saying that we don't close early who are those <laughs> it's personal next time someone comes and says, a lot of people are saying that this man of God is some way that you two join and say eh, it's true he's some way you've just picked up a stone and let me tell you you throw the stone by its own work the whole you see how the whole church is quiet because it means all of you are guilty it means all of you are guilty look at your neighbor and say are you guilty are you guilty listen it is wisdom not to speak of matters that are high above you you are not in Obinim's church why are you talking against him you are not in what's the other one's name above four why are you talking against him and then the one in Kumasi prophet one Opambo. leave them Atabraga go to verse 4 You see, you see the statement of Asalam. Then look at verse 5. Aha. Uh -huh. Then verse 6. Look at what Absalom did. We have people in the church. And on this manner did Absalom to all Israel that came to the king for judgment. So Absalom stole the hearts of the men of Israel. Absalom stole the heart of the people before I realized the people are fighting against David his own son somebody gave birth to somebody he gave opportunity to somebody he gave the platform to somebody he called and anointed somebody he entrusted and said you I entrust you with this somebody he said you I believe in you that same person walked to people and then we will speak evil about the man of God and you also believe and you think it will be well with you the man of God doesn't need to say anything Absalom is a spirit be careful be careful when people walk up I mean you can ask Becky there was a time a woman came and then she was coming to tell me about Archbishop telling me about how bad archbishop was uh, da, da, da. i just told Peke that this person you have brought to come and see me today is the last time don't let her come again have you heard but well, he brought the person he, he brought <laughs> so you, you don't, i don't want to see her again at the point i said this is it cut her off i don't want you to even i was i told him that i don't want you to even relate to her no because she can influence you and it will influence me but what do you have? Absalom will come. Will steal the heart of Pastor Kingsley. And Pastor Kingsley will still say, I am with Reverend Mark. But he's seeing Absalom secretly. You are an Absalom. That is what most of you do. Anybody you declare publicly, you must declare them privately. Don't speak against a man of God privately. And then when you see him in public, you pretend like you love him. It won't work. It's a spirit. That is why your blessings are never coming. Because what? Listen. It is public activities. It is private activities that determine public rewards. So if you are talking against somebody in secret, don't expect to receive public awards. It doesn't work. I don't know how to even do that 
if I speak if I speak about you in your absence when you come you'll be sure that I'll talk about it again there's nothing like that if I'm angry with you I, I will say it I will call for a meeting I will say it if I can't say it I will employ somebody to say it there's nothing like that with me you see you're all quiet because all of you are guilty walk to about five people and say you I know you what the man of God is saying repent repent yeah. tell them repent are you a faithful person at all so if your father is giving an instruction and you are still sitting down <laughs> hallelujah I have not finished the message I am not going to go deeper Say deeper, Papa. <laughs> Let me just finish. Let me finish. That is what happened to jo- Jonathan, the son of Saul. Jonathan was a friend of David. And you see, to the father, he pretended like he was a correct son. Your father is looking for David to kill. David is an enemy to your father. And you have to declare your stand and tell your father that as for me i believe that david is correct no do you know what jonathan did he was here and here oboha no oboha that is how most of you are people that want to kill your fathers in secret you go and see them then in public you can't say father father daddy daddy papa 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 the papa reverend the uh, what our papa Papa one, give me the 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 uh, place. <laughs> uh, is a Facebook family still there? Are <laughs> they, uh, they commenting? <laughs> Papa the power. You know what are the things they have been saying? Papa the Papa. Prophet one, you say all these things, but then in secret, you go and see people who are stoning your man of God, and you sit down over a cup of tea. And they give you the biggest stone. They give you brick. And you take my image and you are stoning me. But when you come, you pretend like you love me. You are carrying the spirit of Absalom. Why do you want to be a pretender? I'm not afraid of anybody. I only respect everybody. But I don't fear anybody. No. No. If you come to church and we feel your dress is your dressing is not nice, we should be able to tell you. We will not go and have a meeting later and say that oh this dress this person one is not nice and talk about. We will call you and say, my brother, my sister, we think the dress because it's not everybody who has feet. What if the dress you are wearing will make a brother fall? A brother will see the dress and before he realize he is watching pornography in his head. And he will not listen to the message. Meanwhile, that message he was going to listen to was going to cause his breakthrough the following day. So because of you, he never ha- uh, had his breakthrough. And you don't want us to talk. And when we talk to you, you call us enemies. So why are you still coming to the church? What kind of Jezebelic spirit is that? It is only the spirit of Jezebel that tries to kill the prophet. Jezebel was the one who was fighting against the prophet. He, he, he fought against, he terminated Elijah's ministry. When the spirit of Jezebel is in a place, eh, it will terminate the prophetic unction on the, on the life of the man of God. That is why we need to rise up and kill the spirit of unfaithfulness. Every church member here, today, as your man of God, I give you the legal charge anybody at all that will speak against your church against your man of God you have the right to shut them up do you know why you must learn to put listen don't sit down and say oh, God's church eh, why are we fight? it's not fight oh. the Bible says resist the devil and he will flee there are people eh, they don't carry the spirit of the devil they are the devil themselves that's why Jesus can you be rebuked Jesus looked at his disciple 
he looked at Peter and called him devil. You have not called you devil. And you are angry. Faithful man. He still stayed. The spirit of Absalom. Can you handle whatever I'm going to say? Let me just close. That was the dilemma of Jonathan. He was with the father and he was with David. He couldn't declare his stand. Do you know what happened to him? He died. He died just like the father. Why couldn't you tell your father boldly that, Daddy, oh, I think Jonathan, uh, I think David is a good person. So, whatever you are planning, I believe that he's a good person. And why couldn't you also tell David that I am for my father? But why do you pretend to your father to like him and pretend to David to also like him? That's why Jonathan died. Ha. <sighs> People are not happy today. Faithfulness is faithfulness is forevermore. If you must be faithful, faithfulness is not for one day, it's not for one week. You see, when two people are going to get married at the altar, you say, for better, for worse, in sickness and in health, till death. Do you know what that means? It means there is nothing you will ever do that will separate me from you. There was a woman, I remember clearly, she was sitting around where Chief Inspector and Mr. Emmanuel sat, is sitting. And she said, as for me, I will die in this church. That's what she said. She said, as for me, I will die in this church. She was sick. Terribly sick. She died as a member of this church. We traveled all the way. Where, 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 where is the name of that? Keta. We traveled all the way to Keta because of her because she declared her commitment faithfully some of you cannot say that because you know your one leg is outside you know that in your mind you are just waiting for something to happen then you leave the church on that day at the funeral grounds who officiated the wedding i was the one holding the officiating whatever officiating the funeral we have not done funeral before but that day we had to conduct a funeral and I was standing there doing the things because somebody has declared that as for me I will die in this church we're only a few church members we're not even up to 50 we're even about just 30 people and here comes a woman who's passing for God and for the things of God was so high that she was willing to die in a ministry where she, we, she didn't even know the future about as to whether the church will grow or not she didn't care one thing she knew was that God was in the church and she was willing to die in the church. Faithfulness is not for a season. Faithfulness is not when you are happy. Faithfulness is not when you are okay. Faithfulness is to death. Revelation chapter 2 verse 10. See, they are faithful unto death. Faithful unto death. In as much as I jokingly come and say, oh, ask for this thing. One of these days I will run away and leave you. I can't. It is to death do me part. I'm sure the day I will die, if it is a Sunday, I will be preaching and die behind the pulpit. No, there were opportunities that came along the line. But you know what? I am faithful to this thing. If I am not serious to the thing, who will be serious? When I started the church, nobody was coming to church. We had an opportunity to do some comic or some sketch, skit with verse at one. Because I was a, 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 I'm a trained actor. We're going to do some nice things for verse. They said some series B for verse at, and they called me. And guess the days they gave me. They said Saturdays and Sundays. And the amount looks nice. I said, why don't I just go and do this thing and then come and shoot? 
and come and use the money for the church. I told myself, no. Even if nobody is coming to church, I still see the thousands that are in the church. I will not disappoint them. I will not disappoint them. There was a time it was only Nyameche and the brother were coming to church. I told myself, even if this ministry I started is only for this girl, I will still do it. How much more now we have grown? So when I dress, you think that I'm, I'm trying to do showmanship. No. I am seeing the thousands. I am seeing the ten thousands. I am seeing the hundreds of thousands. So I am trying to put myself in alignment for that thousands and ten thousand. I see the future. The future is bright. The future is good. The future is clear. The future will be better. So I align myself for the future. That is why we are doing what we are doing. Because there is a place we are going to. There is a heaven we want to gain. And there is a hell we want to shun. So when you see me doing certain things, you think, oh, ask me, he did, no, 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 no. I don't see 100. I don't see 200. I see the ten thousands. I see that auditorium where many souls are sitting and we are preaching to them this same message, faithful men and a thousand people are giving their life to Christ I see that that big choir that will be standing to sing and preaching the gospel I see that hundred member ushers coming with the offering basket and counting the offering I see that branches that is coming all around the world so a time spent with my disciples is not a time wasted because I am sowing seeds and one day I will reap You may think I like talking. No. When you see few people, your your talking is slow. But when you see hundreds, thousands, so I am rehearsing for the thousands. Because one day, I said one day, it won't be long. One day, I'll stand behind the pulpit, and the whole place will be full. And then we'll count the number. Say, Reverend, I'm sorry to say, but we have fifty thousand inside and. 54,000 people outside. We don't know what to do with the crowds. I said, okay, we are going to do the fifth service because we have just finished the fourth service. He said, okay, even the fifth service, they are still coming. Okay, let's do up to seven services. I am seeing all that. How can I get tired now? How can I get tired now? When the future is before me, how can I get tired now? That is a spirit of faithfulness. You see the future and say, no, I can't get tired now. The enemy is trying to make me tired. But he will get tired before we get tired. We will not retire. But we shall refire. Say we will not retire. But we shall refire. Faithfulness unto death. Sometimes I come to church only 20 people. Those times I come to church only 2 people. Oh, that is why I value those people. I value them. Because the, when, when, when the church had nothing, we had nothing. There was no microphone. Paul would come and sit down. He was the only person who came to church that day. I would preach, though that beginning was small, that latter end. If I was not faithful with that message, and I said, because only one person, so we are not having service today, today Paul will not be here. Preach when. It was Pinocchio, Bismarck, who come from Kofu. That time you were staying at Hachua. So where were you staying? You were staying at Tema. He will come. The wooden place, they will come and sit down. You see Desmond. After he has, you know, gone to do certain things on Saturday, Sunday, he will come. That is why I love them like that. Because they believed in me when nobody believed in me. Yeah. Augustine and Co. they will come. I'll go and call them. Sometimes they don't have church dress. They wear their whatever and come like that. One, I remember the first time I went to call them. Uh, he, Paul came out of the uh, with bed sheet around his body. <laughs> and everybody said, uh, uh, please take this one. <laughs> and he didn't know what was happening, so he had to follow me. He was the only one who followed me. They were faithful. They were faithful when the church didn't even have a future. When we were only two, they had they still believed. Pastor Kingsley and Co. 
Pastor Tammy those times we we'll go we came to have church service and then they sacked us the next available place was his house and then the landlady sacked him from his house because of the church wherever he is eh, even if it is a thousand years his name will forever be part of the history books of the church I don't forget things I don't forget things I don't forget things how my wife and the sisters will pick taxi all the way from Dansuman Sahara top all the way to Dome and taxi drivers will be insulting them because they are coming to church they will come Sunday, Tuesday, Friday taxi in, taxi out calculate it and see this was 2012, 2013 calculate it and see how much it costs for a week so when you see certain people sitting in a certain position it is not gift it is faithfulness Let me close with this scripture. You see, you see the scripture I gave you. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give you a crown. That is why they have the crowns. That's why they are seated on the seats they are sitting. For those of you who don't know, Lady Martina was already a pastor before I married her. She was already a pastor in the church before I married her. Some people are not faithful. They are waiting for the right opportunity. They are waiting for the right. And I'm watching all of you. I'm gauging you like, like that. Uh, because no look at all these people here all these years Brother King, how many years since you joined the church eight years eight years he's been in the church from eight years and you came one year two years ago and you think that i'll just look at you and say <laughs> well, them. faithfulness must be tested an untested faith is an untrusted faith. That's why you see Chief is better. Four years now, he and his wife, they've been coming to church. Sunday in, Sunday out. He and his wife. He never said, okay, we are stopping the church. The church is not growing. It's a small church. It's not a big church. Uh, I mean, now I am chief. Okay, first I was uh, sergeant. Now I am a uh, chief inspector. So now I'm going to get a church where chief inspectors so now as I'm going to ASP I have to get a big church where when I take money and I go and sow a seed into the life of the man of God they'll believe some of you are just waiting for that day you get that your car and that your house you have to call us to come and clean your house for you you are not faithful your faithfulness is conditional faithfulness is conditional there are people today who are supposed to be members of the church but you know what they are waiting for the church to have a name then they'll put me my my picture on the uh, don't go and do it I'll, I'll, when i see it I'll, I'll insult you don't put my picture on your status Before they come, this is my papa this is my man of god god bless all those who use my pictures on their status when nobody knew me god bless all of you i hear have no idea faithfulness you, you see it's hard to find faithful people someone who will just be there just be there with you through thick and thin is with you those times i didn't have a car i'll come to the office to wait on god and then these people will come and sit in the church and wait for me when i finish they will go and escort me to the house because they don't want their pastor to work alone we we'll walk together. When I didn't have Laurie Fair, they will walk with me to the house. When I'm coming from the house at dawn, 5.30, I will call them and they will walk me, with me to the church. From CFC, they will walk with me together and walk back with me. And they've still been in my life till now. Pastor Kinsley can come all the way, drive his car, come to my house and fetch water. Take gallons and go and fetch water for me. And he does not say, Reverend, I'm also married. I have a child. There's a guy in Presby. He's called Bright. Brightophory. One time, he did something that shocked me. I was in the house. He drove his car to my house. He's a very big man. He drove his car to my house. And do you know what he did? He said, Reverend, I've noticed your car is dirty. So I came to take your car. I'm not saying come and do it. Please. <laughs> He took he left his car with me. Then he took my car. 
He said, I'm going to wash it. He said, you can use my car. Wherever you want to go, you can use it. Then I went and did my rounds. The car inside was sweet. My God. <laughs> I don't know, but when you are driving someone's car, it's nice. But <laughs> if it's your own car, it's like you are thinking about the problems in the car. So you are careful. When this guy, I met him finally. And I saw my car. You can ask my wife. He finished dressing the car, washed it after that, gave me 50 CDs to fill the car with food. There is someone who has his wife, has his cars. You see, there are people eh, they've been able to register their names permanently in the heart of people. So no matter what the person would do, wherever the person will go, he will carry them along. That is why Peter, James, John, and the 12 disciples, the Bible says that their names are written on the foundations of heaven. Do you know why? Because they did things that heaven cannot even erase. You can never tell the story of Jesus Christ without mentioning the 12 disciples. When they are mentioning the story of the filler, one day, will your name be part? Or do say, there was a time there was so so and so he was with us for a year there are people who got jobs for them and the next moment they left because they feel this is not their church they should go to Einstein. so there was Einstein. and you came here we got a job for you stayed here for one year after you got a job they say come to church ask for me I am going back to my high CJC. Go to your high CJC and let us also stay in our Tefila. Lastly, this scripture, Proverbs 22, verse 29. Sorry I took your time, but certain messages, it's my. Listen, all of you who have stood, those times I'll preach long messages and you will sit down and enjoy the message. I'm watching all of you. One day your names will be mentioned because a time is going to come eh, that the place, listen, the church members will be so many that we will not have time to even do two hour service. The service will be one hour, 30 minutes. So the preaching will be only 45 minutes. And you will miss those times wherever you used to preach for one hour, 30 minutes. So enjoy today. Maybe today is the last time. See as thou a man diligent in his ways. If you see a man faithful, where will he stand? You will stand before kings. Some of you, the only reason why people will take you in certain jobs is because you are faithful. Are you here? Look at Austin. How many years now since you joined the church? Like three years he's been faithful. It's not easy to find a Nigerian in your church. To the point that people think I'm a Nigerian. It's true. Was that your thinking also? You thought I was a Nigerian before you came. You didn't think so. Who thought I was a Nigerian? If you are here, you thought I was a Nigerian. They ask you whether your pastor is a Nigerian. They ask you whether your pastor is a Nigerian. Okay. These two, they ask you whether your pastor is a Nigerian. <laughs> Please, where you go, go and tell them your pastor is called Reverend Mark and your name. Macho voter region. Macho mafia loss of copper. Sranya cho joje. Oje over je. Go and tell them, okay? Nigeria can not even be there before. <laughs> Please, I'm a, I'm a full blown airway. Airway. Just that I don't use my airway title because Ghanaians, you don't respect certain tribes. So I just be Mark E. Amlet. <laughs> but if you go to my hometown, it's Amlade. Say it, let me hear. Amlade. Yeah, yeah, say Amlade, Amlade, Amlade. Mini Amlade. Quick, quick, coffee. <laughs> Someone to us. Reverend Mark E. Amlet. Are you in church? That is why I love my church members. So. 
That's why I love my church members because I value them. I value. Listen, you, you have no idea that Sunday after Sunday people will come and be listening to you. I value it. So when I see one person trying to corrupt them, I will fight you with all my energy. Are you here? So if you are here, don't let anybody corrupt you with false information. Be a faithful church member. Be a faithful Christian. Be committed to your tithe. Some of you have never paid tithe this year. I won't share any word, baby. How? Huh? Even government, I won't share any big And I'm not a Nigerian. I'm a full blown Ghanaian. I was born in Kolebu Hospital. Grew up in Kotobabi Pig Farm. Went to Winneba. Stayed there for five or six years. Came back to La Paz New Market, Cosmo School behind. Then later went to Tabora number three. Number, number, how? Tabora Junction. Then came to Dome, Puma Philly Station side. Slept in the last corner of the church for almost a year. Moved to CFC and moved to Ashoman Estate finally. I'm a full blown Ghanaian. I stayed in Winneba before. In Winneba, I was locked in the classroom over the weekend because the madam didn't like me because of the name Enyonam. That is why I, my name, I do Mark E. I don't write the full Enyonam because of that woman. She locked me in the classroom. Meanwhile, there was somebody in the class also called Oyemam, which is just the uh, e, fancy translation of Enyonam. But just because I'm an Ewe, she just locked me in the classroom one day. My parents came to take me the following day. They looked for me, sir. They didn't get me. She locked me. It was Friday. She locked me. I think I came out Monday or so. Or Sunday. I don't know. Saturday, one of them. And she repeated me. She repeated me that year. Yeah. If not me, I'm a very bright, brilliant student by the grace of God. By the grace of God. You know, you can see. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding. If you are built, if you are faithful, you are diligent you will stand before kings you see this thing Sunday after Sunday, Tuesday after Tuesday ask them, Tuesday service we used to do school of the word long time ago we will gather in Pastor Samir's house, we will just be 8 people in a circle, then I will be teaching them the word of God how to do Bible studies, how to do quiet time since that time then Friday we will go to the park and pray it has always been Sunday, Tuesday, Friday. Sunday, Tuesday, Friday. Sunday, Tuesday, Friday. It has always been till now. And now they have added Facebook Live. So now do you know what I want to do? I want to remove the Facebook Live and bring it to Friday, 6.30. Come and join us. Are you getting me? Yeah. God bless all of you. Choristers, God bless you. One day you are going to wear that powerful choir robes, and some of you are going to be leaders of hundreds, not because of your gift. They say, But this Rosemont girl, who is she? You tell her, Hey, keep quiet, keep quiet. This is my second child. When I didn't even marry you, you are not here. Keep quiet. When I say keep quiet, keep quiet, sit down. <laughs> you are singing treble, sing. <laughs> One day, Emmanuel Perkins will gather people. I say, you people, you are the people coming from the various branches. Come and let me teach you how to go live. You know, and pick and pick the feed from the main church. Let, let me teach you. They say, okay, this is how we do it. So we are going to run one week. And then he said, ah, what do you mean by one week? Ah, but we can't come. He said, keep quiet. Do you know what we did? They took us all the way to beach just to learn about software. You had to complain. Keep quiet. Uh, you, you are even lucky. They are giving you breakfast, lunch, and supper, and all these things. You ah. That day will come. I said, listen, that day will come. When I give prophecies, take it seriously. Do you know why? Because last year I used to tell you people that a time will come you watch me on your TV. It happened this year. You are watching me on your phone. And wait. 
2021, you'll be sitting in your house. Some people will be sitting in their house and be watching us. They say, hey, that is my church. Hey, hey. See, Ike, Ike is now singing. Hey. They say, Ike is now singing. Maybe that time people will be getting married. Who are those who get married? Senna and A. Uh, the girls, ah, look at me. If I was there, like by this time, I'm, I'm the I'm their what? <laughs> groups, groups, men or what? I'm part of the groups men. Best men. But you didn't get the opportunity. I pray, listen, you can never finish the church of God. Do you know why? Because you are not the beginning. So you cannot finish it. I pray for you that the spirit of faithfulness will rest upon you. And that you not allow offense to take you out of what God has called you to do. No matter the offense, listen, insult you get, offense you get. But Jesus says something in Matthew chapter 11. Blessed is he who is not offended in me. Yeah. But like, don't let them offend you and take you out. Esther, you'll be offended. Diana, you'll be offended. Doris, people will offend you. Pinocchio will offend you. But you have to. You have to be steadfast. She has been offended. And tell yourself that no matter what will happen in Tefila, this is my church. This is where God wants me to be. I'll be here. I'll be here. I will be here. Tell your neighbor, I'll be here. I'll be here worshiping. Rise to your feet. All of the days of my life. I'll be here worshiping. All of the days of my life. I'll be here. I'll be here worshiping all of the days of my life. I'll be worshiping all of the days of my life. Do you believe what you are saying? I'll be where? The fila. I want us to sing it again. I'll be here worshiping all of the days of my life. I'll be here worshiping all of the days of I'll be here. I'll be worshiping the days of techno. I'll be worshiping all of the days. For the last time, I'll be here. Let's go. I'll be here worshiping all of the days of my life. I'll be here worshiping all of the days of my life. Even though it's not easy, even though it's not easy, I'll be worshiping. Even though it's not easy, even though it's not easy, I'll be here. I'll be worshiping all the day. All of the days of my life, I'll be here, I'll be here, worshiping. All of 
the days of my life. Hallelujah. So, whether people offend you in the church or not, you tell yourself, this is where God wants me to be. I'll be here. Say, I'll be here. Find joy and happiness. Ophelia, you understand what I'm saying? Maybe it's, have you heard me? Rosemont, have you heard me? Who is behind there? Amika, have you heard me? Are you getting me? So may God help us. God bless all of you for being a wonderful congregation. I love all of you. I mean, it's an honor to pastor these great people. You are one of the greatest people and greatest congregation. Amen. There are a lot of nations. I get to me. We have Britain, nation of Britain, nation of America. Then we have congregation. And then we have imagination. All right. God bless you all. Facebook family, I really cherish you all. You are not there. All the times you have been watching Ella, Emma, uh, Emma, Doc, all these people, they've been watching faithfully. God bless you. And God promotes you and surprise you in the month of November. Bye-bye. Please be seated. Augustine, please, the t-shirt. All right, take out your offering. You are singing a version, sing it. Peter, you are singing a version, sing it. Sing the version you are singing.
doing this, but there is a lot of things that have to be done with the media. Drums must be changed. Keyboard, they just change it, but if they get another one, they won't, they won't complain. I get to me. Look at this thing they are using to shoot. They have to take it to the back there because it blocks everybody's view. And that, that day, all these places will be packed. So we may add one extra lane. So this one, we have to take it to the back and all that. You get it. So we need a lot of money. I get to me. Now, we will be wearing this every Sunday. Then after Sunday service, we'll all go, when you're going home, you distribute the handbills. We'll be taking pictures. We'll be doing a lot of uh, photo shoots. So they'll take pictures with the uh, t-shirt, whatever, whatever style you want to take. Just make sure that the t-shirt, the Shakina comes. Okay? Don't turn your back. You will let us see the Shakina. Okay? So, all of you must get one. Okay? So there are, they've started making 15 shirts but I want to make more for every church member. Maybe you want to even buy for somebody. You can say, Reverend, I'm buying three. I'm buying four. So whoever does not have the money to pay, the person should come for interview. We will interview the person and decide and give the person one. So anybody that wants to, this is the first one. This is the original copy. All other ones are photocopy. Does it have any mistake? Uh, so this original copy is large for women. This one I'm giving it out for 100. There's another one there. Okay, 100. Who wants? Is that? There. Ah. Uh, okay, this one today.